I finally got a lock that supports that home key feature. Introducing the Schlage Encode Plus. Today I'll cover the installation and the features. I'll also share with you everything that I love and everything that I don't love about this lock and home key. Was it worth the wait? Let's go. Sponsored by the Signals for HomeKit app. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane, if you're new here, and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit, with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. So you guys remember way back at WWDC 2021 when Apple announced that super cool new feature for HomeKit called HomeKeys. Oh man, it looks so great being able to unlock your door with just your iPhone or even better, your Apple Watch. Well, here we are almost a whole year later and there is finally a lock available to purchase that supports this home key feature. Now, I did buy this lock here with my own money. This was not sent to me, but you know that doesn't really matter. Y'all know I'm gonna speak freely and I'm gonna tell you how I really feel no matter what, whether it was sent to me you know, for review on the channel or if I use my own money. I just like to always be upfront about that stuff. This one here did cost me about $300. I bought it from Home Depot online. It's also for sale at Lowe's and Build with Ferguson. All of these retailers actually seem to sell out of their stock pretty quick. So it seems like maybe Schleg underestimated the demand for this thing. At the time of recording, it's still unavailable. It's out of stock. Hopefully those retailers will have it back in stock very soon. I did order mine and it arrived a few days later. The Schleg Encode Plus supports not only HomeKit, but also the Amazon and Google Assistants as well. But today, of course, as always, we're gonna focus on that HomeKit integration. It comes in two styles. You have the Century Trim, which comes in either matte black or satin nickel, or you can get the Camelot Trim, which comes in either satin nickel or aged bronze. It runs on four AA batteries, and they say you should get up to six months of battery life with typical use. So one thing I found pretty interesting is that this lock is basically marketed as a Wi-Fi lock, but it actually supports thread and Bluetooth as well. I found nothing really about this in the specs or any of the marketing. The great thing is you really don't have to think much about this at all when you're setting it up. It should just work. I assume the Wi-Fi is needed to use the lock with Amazon or Google assistance, you know, in order to control it remotely when you're away from home and the Bluetooth or thread is being used when you're using it with HomeKit. Of course, with HomeKit, you will also need a HomeKit hub, like an Apple TV, an iPad, or a HomePod in order to control the lock remotely. So here's the box. Nothing too pretty about the packaging here. Inside, we have the touchscreen assembly. I did order the Camelot trim in the satin nickel as I just thought this would look best with my existing door and hardware. We have the inside assembly with battery cover, the back plate, the manual in English, Spanish, and French. We've got the batteries, a bunch of screws, the strike plate, the bolt. You get one old fashioned key. And this is everything included in the box. Installation was pretty straightforward, especially if you've ever installed a smart lock before, but if not, it's still not too bad. First, remove your old lock. Next, you'll install the bolt. You can adjust the bolt length if needed by twisting it. Make sure the word top is facing up and that the slot for the tailpiece is centered in the hole. Screw it in with the provided screws. Next, they recommend removing your existing strike plate, so I did, and then installed the provided one using the long screws. There are shorter screws provided if you, you, know, if you have a window that's too close and can't use those really long screws. Next is the touch screen. Route the cable through below the bolt and align the tailpiece through the bolt. Secure the back plate with the two screws. Now this is important. Make sure the outside touch screen is straight right here before tightening the screws down and moving on to the next step. I didn't do that because I kind of suck at reading directions, so I actually had to undo some stuff and come back to this step in order to get my touch screen straight. Connect the cable and then put in your last two screws.
put in your batteries and you're pretty much good to go. There are some default codes that you can use which are printed on the battery cover as well as on the manual, but I skipped that part. These codes won't work anyways once you set up the lock in HomeKit. Now you wanna shut the door and make sure the lock can extend and retract freely without too much resistance. I've found in my experience with smart locks in the past, this is very important. If it's hard to lock or unlock your door here manually, you will probably run into issues. But mine is all good to go so I can now move forward and pair the lock. Push the button on the back to begin pairing. The little LED will flash blue. If you have an iPhone XR or later, you can tap the back of the lock to begin the pairing process. Tap add to home and then choose your home kit home. Choose the room you wanna put it in. I'll put mine in the front foyer. Change the name of the lock if you want. I'll keep mine the default name here. Hit continue. And here we go, the thing we've been waiting for, home key. Tap continue, and now we can enable express mode, which will allow you to unlock the door by holding your iPhone or your Apple Watch near the lock. If you wanna require authentication, you can tap require face ID or passcode. This can, of course, be changed later if you want. I'll turn express mode on. Now we get the ability to set an access code. Tap continue. I can create my four to eight digit access code. So I'll type in one, two, three, four, and check this out. I love this. I get a message saying this access code can easily be guessed and I have the option to change it. I got this message a few times when I've tried four digit codes that contained a lot of the same numbers. So a uh, nice little added touch. I'll continue just for demonstration purposes. I will of course change this later. Tap continue and boom, our lock is now added to our home. I can lock it from the home app. And the first time you do this, it'll do this weird little calibration thing. And that's it. We can put the battery cover back on and it's now working nice and fast in HomeKit. So with this lock, you get multiple ways to lock and unlock your door. Of course, we have the thumb turn from the inside, you know, to lock and unlock it. You also have a regular key that can be used if you want. And I should note that using any of these methods will update the status in HomeKit, you know, in case you're using automations or getting notifications or anything like that. Oh, so that is my signal to tell you about today's sponsor, the Signals for HomeKit app. So this app gives you the ability to flash any combination of your existing HomeKit lights, like you just saw here, with a simple tap, a Siri voice command, or through automations. You can set up a dinner time signal or a time to go signal to flash the lights around your house and get everyone's attention. Maybe a get your butt out of bed signal that triggers every morning to help you or the kids get up. Things like that, you can get really creative with this. And now with the Signals app on the Mac, you can take your automations even further like using your HomeKit motion sensors, leak sensors, buttons, and more to trigger your signals. It also supports Siri shortcuts, which I love. Big thanks to the Signals for HomeKit app for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel and just for making an awesome app for us HomeKit users. Download the app today by using the link in the description below. Now, moving on to the keypad, this feature is always a must have in my house since I have kids, one of which still doesn't have a phone. You can configure multiple codes, which we'll get to in a second. The keypad is pretty nice. It's backlit when you touch it and it has a nice textured feel to it that is fingerprint resistant. The buttons are all touch buttons so there's no physical feedback of any sort. You do get that bright LED in the upper corner each time you tap the button or a button, which is super helpful. I would have been upset if there was no feedback at all, but that LED is actually quite bright and still easily seen even when it's really bright outside. There's also a beeping audio feedback each time you press a button, which can be disabled if you want, but that also helps as you're trying to press the buttons. Additionally, they say there is a low battery indicator on the touch screen. Of course, I haven't witnessed this yet, but I'm glad you'll be able to tell on the keypad when the battery is low. If you type in the wrong code four times, an alarm will sound and the keypad will lock up for 15 seconds. 
another wrong code and it'll lock up for 30 seconds. Then a minute, then two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, then to five minutes if you keep going with the wrong code. And each time the keypad locks up, that alarm will sound for about 15 seconds. This would get pretty frustrating pretty fast for somebody trying to like force their way in by guessing your code. So that's a nice little security feature. And of course we have that home key feature which is what we've all been waiting on, or at least what I've been waiting on. Since I enabled express mode, I can simply tap the lock with my phone, even if it's locked as you can see here, and the door will unlock. No need to wake up the phone or unlock it, unless of course you choose not to use that express mode. And in similar fashion, you can do the same thing with your Apple Watch. This is probably my favorite thing about this lock. It's truly fantastic. Uh, it works so well. It's just like magic. It's been very, very fast and reliable in the short time that I've been using it. Uh, this is now my preferred method of unlocking my door nowadays. Every time I come home, I just tap my watch, boom, right in the door we go. So let's look in the home app real quick. Under the locks settings, you'll see you have the typical stuff you'd expect for a home kit lock. But then we have the manage access section here. Here you can see who has access to the lock and you can add guests like the babysitter, create a custom code for your guest, and you can even share that code with them from here. Easily turn on and off the access for your guests whenever you want. Schlage says there is a 100 code capacity, which is nice. I know I'll never need that many codes. If we go back and go to the home settings, let's look under locks. Here is everyone with access to your locks. You can go in and remove or change access codes. There's also the option to show you your home key in the wallet app. In the wallet app, if you tap on the three dots, you can view your personal access code. And this is also where you can toggle that express mode on and off. You can of course also turn on or off notifications for the lock in the home app. One really cool thing that surprised me a little bit is that you'll get notifications telling you who unlocked the door when someone uses their personal access code or one of your residents uses their home key. I thought this was really awesome and something I wasn't really expecting. Now let's take a look at the Schlage app. If you're like me, you probably won't be using this very much, but it might be good to download it because you can get some extra features that you know aren't accessible in the home app. If you've already paired it in HomeKit, your lock should show up automatically. You can see we have an option to turn on or off a built-in alarm. When this is turned on, it will sound an alarm when the lock detects forced entry or when it detects door movement. And you can see you can adjust the sensitivity here as well. I will say that the alarm is not very loud at all, so you know, take it for what it's worth. There is an auto lock delay that you can turn on and set to 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, or four minutes. This will automatically relock your door after it's been unlocked. You also have the one touch locking feature, which I really do like this. Just tap the lock button on your way out of the door to quickly lock the door behind you. And finally, you can turn on or off that key press beeping sound. Of course, you can lock and unlock it from here in the Schlage app, although, like I said, you probably won't if you're using it with HomeKit. You can also set up user codes here, but only if it's not paired in HomeKit. If it's paired in HomeKit, you have to do that in the Home app like we showed earlier. Now, little pro tip I discovered, if you want to see the existing user codes of others in your house without changing them, you can do that here in the Schlage app. For some reason, currently in the Home app, it will only let you see your own code. You can still change and remove others' codes in the Home app for some reason, which is a little weird, uh, but you can't see them. Again, you can use the Schlage app to view the existing codes here that are currently set up. Now, let's talk about everything I like and everything I don't like after using this thing for about a week or so. There are a lot of things to love. I love how fast and quiet it is when locking and unlocking the door. It's definitely the fastest and quietest smart lock that I've used. It's also the most expensive lock that I've owned, by a good bit actually. But with that said, the build quality is very good. It feels like a solid piece of equipment and just feels nice and secure on my front door. 
I think it looks nice and it fits the style of my door and my house just fine. I like that they offer two different styles and different colors. One is more modern and the other a little bit more traditional looking. Home key, the feature is freaking amazing. It's so easy for me and any of my family members with Apple devices to quickly unlock the door, the ability to set additional codes for guests, share those codes and toggle codes on and off is fantastic. And getting those specific notifications telling me who unlocked the door is really great. One of the beautiful things about Apple and HomeKit is that integration, I'll get those notifications on all of my Apple devices, my Apple TV, you name it. Again, this lock is connecting over thread when you're using it in HomeKit. When I view my thread network in the Eve app, you can see here that the lock is indeed connected over thread. Now, this did take a while for that thread connection to show up. For some reason, it was stating that it was connected over Bluetooth for at least like a day or two. If you do connect this to HomeKit and you see that it's connected over Bluetooth and you want that thread connection, just be a little patient and uh, it should in time you know, switch over to thread. So now what are some of the things that I do not like? I wish there was some sort of physical feedback when pressing the buttons on the keypad. Not a huge deal, not a deal breaker or anything since there are other audio and visual cues like the beeping and that bright LED, but some type of haptic feedback, even physical buttons might be nice. You know, that could be a matter of preference whether you like touch or actual physical buttons. But honestly, at this moment, that's all I can really complain about regarding the actual hardware, the lock itself. The rest of my comments, which you're about to hear, really falls on Apple, HomeKit, and HomeKey. Now, first and foremost, after lots of trying and even spending over an hour on the phone with Apple support and talking to many of their support people, I found that I am unable to get this to work with my daughter's Apple Watch, which is a bummer. Uh, so she's using an Apple Watch set up you know, through a family plan. That means she doesn't have her own iPhone. The watch is not paired to an iPhone. So if you or someone in your family is doing the same, you will not be able to access home keys on this Apple Watch. I'm assuming that's because the home app is not accessible on these standalone Apple Watches. Like I said, to me, that's a huge bummer and something I'd really like to see Apple work out. What better use case for a home key than a child who only has an Apple Watch, no iPhone, and could use that watch you know, to unlock the door when they come home. I was really looking forward to getting that to work with her watch, but I guess she'll just have to wait until she gets her own iPhone one day. The other thing I'd really like to see implemented is more integration with shortcuts and automation. So hear me out. Our cameras can detect specific people and even notify us, you know, who's at the door and things like that. Facial detection is not always super reliable with cameras, so I get it. There might be some difficulties there when you're trying to trigger automations using something like facial recognition. But now with HomeKey, we can get notified when certain people unlock the door either by using their, uh, their Apple devices or their access codes. So I'd really like to see the ability to use this information in automations. Uh, maybe I want a playlist to start playing on my HomePod when I unlock the door between 3 and 5 p.m. on weekdays. Just an example. Or maybe you wanna turn on certain lights when the babysitter or the dog walker unlocks the door. Uh, that would be awesome. I'd love to be able to do things like that. Maybe one day, Apple, if you're listening. Overall, this thing is really amazing. Don't get me wrong. It may just have been worth that long wait. HomeKey really works well, and the Schlage lock itself is a really nice piece of equipment. A hefty price tag at $300, but with everything you get with this, I'd say it's definitely worth it, uh, especially for HomeKit users and you know those all Apple households. Is HomeKey something that you've been waiting on also? Let me know if you still have any questions. I'll do my best to answer those down below in the comment section. Thanks again to today's sponsor, The Signals for a HomeKit app. Again, link to that below. Now, if you're new to HomeKit, be sure to check out my Getting Started playlist right over here that'll give you everything you need to know about the platform and how it works. If you'd like to support the channel even further, consider becoming a channel member and get access to some cool perks like our member Discord community 
and monthly member video chats. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.